And we're going to talk to you about how uh, the Tennessee Conservatives' picks fared at the polls, okay? So Brandon said, hey, these are some folks I would vote for if I were you uh, because they didn't make it into the Rhino Report. Here's some people you probably want to try to replace. Now, let me be clear about my personal endorsements and our publications endorsements. You never know what somebody's really going to do till they get up there in office. Um, and so they could do anything, right? Somebody could turn into a rhino that talks a good conservative game. That, that is the majority of rhinos. Um, but the bigger thing is often I pick anybody who's running against somebody that we know isn't conservative. doesn't always mean they're going to win. Uh, so we're going to go through that. Uh, Bernard T. Polk said, is there a Georgia organization like yours? Buddy, there ain't no organization like ours. I'm so sorry, Bernard. Uh, I don't know that there is. I don't keep up with Georgia, although uh, up until my recent move, it was about three miles away from my house. I have a lot of good friends that live in Georgia, but uh, I can only keep up with one state at a time. Here we go. Let's go starting off at the top of the ticket, uh, the Tennessee Senate. And so we endorsed uh, Earl Seagrest. He did not win against incumbent Randy, uh, Randy the Rhino McNally. Uh, he only got 16.25% of the vote. But, you know, McNally's got more money uh, from special interest than Scrooge McDuck. I mean, he's just got more. You know, he his campaign coffers are full of folks that, that love corporate welfare, lobbyists. I mean, they don't spend $450,000 uh, per year lobbying uh, each member. That's 450 per member up in Nashville because they ain't going to get something back in return. Uh, those steak dinners and $200 of bourbon don't come cheap uh, when it comes to votes. And so that one didn't work out well. Um, we also introduced uh, Kent Morrell, uh, who lost to Richard Briggs, uh, but he did get 33.89% uh, of the vote. That's pretty good. Bo Watson. Uh, didn't have any opposition. Don White won, didn't have any opposition. Mark Pody, thank goodness, won, didn't have any opposition. Now, we get into the District 27 race with uh, Gary Humble, who we endorsed. Uh, Jack Johnson, I don't ever see him uh, probably being in the top five rhino list in the Senate, okay? He's not awful. He's not awful. But during the last two years, uh, when our freedoms were being taken away by the governor primarily, the Tennessee Senate and le the legislature for months on end really just kind of did nothing, and I never saw Jack stand up uh, like I would like for him to have done. And between that and the corporate welfare votes and the gas tax, I'd just rather take a gamble on somebody who's outspoken. I still think Jack's a, a nice fellow. However, Gary only lost by 3% of the vote, and he was outspent probably 300 to 400%. And a lot of it was special interest money. A lot of it was, you know, out of town from PACs that were started by California billionaires who also got corporate welfare here in Tennessee. And then finally, uh, the thing that I think bothers me the most about this race is the only way they won against Gary was to lie. The mailers they sent out, the things they claimed, because there wasn't anything they could really pin on Gary, it, it was misleading uh, and they were lies. And I, I think it's very difficult to simultaneously claim to be a Christian and then to lie, to win. And I don't care if you run it, organize it, if you turn a blind eye to it, if you don't call it out. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's about who wins, right? If you don't win, you don't get to legislate. If you don't win, you know, just, you know, tough crap, right? Um, and I understand you got you to gotta run to win. I used to run campaigns. Okay, and I could get back in at any time if I wanted to. It's a very disruptive business to your family life. Uh, but I wish he had won, so that's moving right along. Uh, Larry uh, Linton, uh, who's running as an incumbent against Dale Carr, so that's not going to happen in the uh, Republican primary. That'll be uh, happening in November. Uh, we had uh, Elaine Davis, who we endorsed, uh, who won with 55.88%, uh, and this is, again, talking about the House. Uh, we had Monty Fritz, who won, who we endorsed, 33.74% uh, of votes. Uh, Dennis Powers was, un in, uh, was, was running for re-election, re and he was uh, unopposed, and he won. This one, um, this one uh, makes me sad. Uh, Terry Lynn Weaver did not win re-election in District 40. And the thing is, Terry Lynn has just been remarkably outspoken, very helpful, uh, somebody you could absolutely count on to be conservative. And 
Michael Hale, I hope he ends up being as conservative as she is. But when I look around at what's inside the Tennessee House, you know, I, I, I just hate replacing somebody who's super conservative with somebody that might or might not be as conservative. I hope Michael Hale is. I uh, hope he is. We shall find out. We will see. Okay. Uh, Michelle Foreman. Uh, one in House District 59, who we endorsed with 62.06% uh, of the votes. Uh, Lori Cordoza Moore did not win. Uh, she lost to uh, Jack uh, I don't know, Mc McCallman. I don't know how to pronounce that. We're going to say McCallman, uh, and hopefully he's conservative. I don't know. We'll find out. All we do is report the votes over here at the Tennessee Conservative. Uh, what is it? Uh, Kevin Powers, who's a, a fantastic, uh, said that Gary uh, won. Uh, with less than 100 uh, vote differences, only 700 and some odd votes, uh, and there were a lot of votes cast. Scott Sapicki uh, won uh, his re-election with 54.55% of votes, thank goodness. Uh, we need somebody like Scott on the Education Committee, and we need to ask Cameron Sexton to get rid of Mark White on that Education Committee. Um, and uh, hopefully maybe Scott could get that chairmanship because Mark White, who chairs that Education Committee presently, uh, voted to make sure that you continue to have to pay as a taxpayer for educating uh, illegal immigrants at your expense, people that break the laws and come to our, our state, oh fine, put the burden on the taxpayer. Uh, he also voted against getting uh, kids, uh, Mark White did, in the bottom 10% of schools uh, into better schools. You know, why, screw those kids, right? And uh, recently, you know, blasted Hillsdale College because they're providing uh, some educational choice in Tennessee, and Larry Arn said some things that were uncomfortable but absolutely true. And a lot of these rhinos are far more concerned uh, with what they say and how it pleases the teachers' unions than they are about the results for the kids and parents. So I sent an email to Cameron Sexton and just plainly asked, do you support Mark White? Are you going to keep him on, on this education committee? I mean, this is the thing we spend the largest budget on. Only a third of kids can read. If this guy's been chairing this committee and this is the best we can see in education in our state, I mean, anybody else would do better, and I think Scott would be a good pick for that. Clay Doggett, 100%. Uh, he won there. Uh, state House District 71. Uh, uh, Kip Capley, who we endorsed, won. Uh, Todd Warner who we endorsed won with 54.41% of the votes. Uh, Lee Mills did not beat Tom Leatherwood. So that, that's sad, but you know, we got two years, we can do it again. And U.S. House of Representatives, that contested 5th District race, we did see that Andy Ogles won. And Andy Ogles and Gary Humble both fought uh, for medical freedom before it was cool, when they had something to lose, when nobody else was doing it, it later became popular to do. You know, we dragged all the rhinos kicking and screaming uh, to that medical freedom special session, two of them, and Ogles and Humble were both involved in that. Uh, and so I'm glad that he's going up to D.C. I wish he had ran for governor instead, just being honest. District uh, 8, Dr. Clean, uh, Dean Klaus, uh, did not... Uh, do well against David Kustoff. Uh, so we still got him in there. Uh, Bruce Griffey did win his uh, judgeship, which is exciting. Uh, and the GOP Executive Committee, uh, Mark Pulliam is a write-in candidate, but I think he was the only one. Uh, those votes aren't tallied yet, but hopefully he wins. And in Hamilton County, which is my home county, I threw in a couple of local endorsements. Larry Grone, who I've known forever and who I think will do a great job, uh, did get on the school board, but Virginia Ann Mason, who is in a very very blue district, uh, lost to Democrat Jill Black. Very hard in a rural, not a rural, in a in an urban market. It is very hard uh, to elect Republicans. It is very hard, but you got to fight anyway. And when you look at the worst performing schools all across Tennessee, they have one thing in common: Democrats. Democrats are in control, or and rhinos allow it. And so there you have it. So that's that took a little time, but we did make some um, progress. But there is more progress to be made.